Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Call to be holy in the words of St. Paul in the second reading. You're called to be holy, not somebody else. You can't outsource your spirituality. You have to have the relationship with God. It doesn't mean weekly prayer or occasional prayer, but rather daily prayer. Why daily prayer? Why this working at becoming holy? Because to pick up on God and the daily events of life, we have to learn the language of God. When asked to describe your interior life, many people don't have the vocabulary for it. They just don't have it as a topic of conversation. It's so private. So from scripture, and from conversations with people about what is most holy, what is most vital, the most profound issues of life, we develop that language to name our experience, which we all have. But we're busy about other things that we're more competent at. We're trained in, in many things. We're trained in our jobs, we're trained in the, the three R's. We're tra- we need to be trained in our interior life. We're appreciating the moments of grace that occur to us throughout our days. God has very good timing. You find yourself in certain situations saying, now why did this happen? Why is this person in my life? Why did this go wrong? Why did this go right? What helps us learn the language of God? Daily prayer. The liturgy of the hours the church celebrates throughout the days, and it's easier now. We used to have these uh, great big books with lots of ribbons, and you're always on the wrong day and the wrong time, but now you just go online. It's all there for you to do the right prayers at the right time. And why will we do these prayers? Because it's basically the book of Psalms. And who used that? Jesus did. You'll see throughout Scripture, as was their custom, they went up with the disciples at that time. Jesus went to the temple to pray. He prayed the Psalms. It's basically 150 ways of feeling. And we all have emotions. But if we tap into what is God trying to teach us through our emotions? Spiritual reading is very important. Certainly the Bible, sacred scripture, but also the great works of spirituality have come to us through 2,000 years of Christianity. Penance, use of the sacrament of confession, is always good for that midwinter cleaning up, tidying up of what's distracting us, what's in the way of our conversing with God in prayer. Those profound conversations is is vital to our lives. We have to identify who is our our soulmate, who's the person that we can raise those uh, very vital conversations with. We need to know that, why? Because we need to grow in virtue. But first you have to find out what your virtue is about. So ask that best friend, that spouse, maybe that adult child, what am I good at anyways? What am I virtuous in? Because grace builds on nature, so lead with your strengths in order to answer the call to be holy. In short, when you grow in virtue, you keep your eyes on the prize of heaven. But when we're at worship, it's kind of otherworldly, ethereal. This is the point where heaven comes and meets earth before our very eyes, both in scripture and in the sacrament of the Eucharist. We can always, always be reminded to be aware of that work of the devil called discouragement. I'm not good enough to be holy. Somebody else should be holy. I'm no plaster saint. You're called to be holy. The only thing worthwhile in life is to become a saint because that's how we spend eternity. So what do you do? But look around you and eliminate temptation. What's in the way of you being better? What's in the way of you being good, of you being holy? Get rid of it. And you need to do that through prayer and the support of people that also pray and that love you. But I said before at the beginning of this homily, we pick up on God in our daily events. So where do you find yourself today? What are you doing after Mass? What were you doing before Mass? How did you prepare for worship? And what are the fruits of worship? Wherever you find yourself, there's an opportunity to grow in faith and holiness. Recently, I found myself trapped in the shoe stores of Europe with my mother shopping nonstop for two weeks. I went there because I thought I'd get a bigger share of the inheritance, but she spent it all. 
And yet, sitting there in the store, day after day, she was thrilled, going around, I'm sitting there with her purse on my lap, watching her shop. And I thought, you know, this is just like my childhood, except my brothers were with me. And we were constantly getting um, yelled at by the clerks. Little boy, don't touch this, don't break this. Very uptight. And I thought back on those wonderful times that were formative, because every time we went to go shopping, my mother would bribe us. If you're good, I'll buy you a toy. I'll get you an ice cream. This is a good bargain. Most of our toy box was basically filled after these shopping adventures. But in addition to shopping, she always brought us to church. We're going to stop and light a candle. This one's sick, or this one needs a job, or it's so-and-so's birthday. And it depended, we could tell how serious the problem was, because it was a really big problem, it was a really big candle. Not so bad, tiny little candle, like a quarter. She let us light candles too. And she'd stand in front of the statue of the Blessed Mother, or St. Joseph. We always skipped over all these other saints. I don't think she liked them. So here we are shopping, I'm carrying all her bags of pocketbooks and shoes and whatever she bought. And I said, Ma, we should stop in this church. Does it have a gift shop? It has a gift shop. And she said, look, the statue of Our Lady. And she was thrilled. And in the midst of our everyday, God's grace broke into our lives. It was indeed uh, riveting and fascinating to go to church on Sunday in Rome. And when priests are in Rome, they carry a, an identification card in Latin. So I had it about to pull it out. And the priest says to me, do you know how to read? I said, well, yes, Father, I know how to read. Good, do the reading. So I get up there, I do the reading. My mother's there with her iPhone trying to take my picture in Rome. So I've got a great picture on my mother's thumb. Uh, and after the priest says, good job, kid. I said, thanks, Father, I try. <laughs> it's fun to be undercover. But God's grace breaking in gave me an opportunity to sit there and see a different role that people play. Uh, to proclaim the word. And it was a nice church. It had been done by some guy named Michelangelo. Yeah, it was okay. There was no St. Margaret Mary's. What was missing was you. That's what makes the church, the people. To read the scripture before strangers, you feel like a missionary. To read scripture before your parishioners, it feels like family. And all those experiences happen for a reason, to teach me as a priest, to teach me as a son, to teach me as a member of a parish. And those are wonderful events. But they're only wonderful because I had time to reflect on them. Uh, when you travel anywhere, you have to get to the airport three days before you leave and you're still late. Um, in those down times, I was able to use a lot of my prayers actually on my iPhone. I have my whole Liturgy of the Hours on the iPhone so I could pray in the terminal uh, when my mother was shopping at a store somewhere. Um, it was indeed a great blessing. Because we don't live in a monastery, none of us do. Um, it's nice to go there for a visit, but you don't want to stay there because it's kind of like too holy for you. Instead, you want to live your life being nourished here, to move out there and pick up on where God is working as well. In preparing ourselves to grow in holiness, we have to prepare for change. Always happens. In preparing for change, we discover who we are. If we hold up sacred scripture, sometimes we read and say, I don't know, this doesn't make any sense at all. And then something happens, and you say, exactly, exactly, that's what it's like. The great privilege I had of being a pastor is really only appreciated when I have the time not to pastor in that downtime, in that time away. And when you come back appreciated, appreciative of what you have, it's wonderful. It's a marvelous event. So think of prayer as a daily counting your blessings, intentionally taking time to say, where am I? <laughs> what just went on? How is God working? And having someone to talk to about that directly. It could be in confession. It could be in your own home. But talk about those, those questions. They pick up on the way the Lord is working. And know that you have the means there. 
And you have the time. We all rush around. We all rush back and forth. But take the moment just to sit and say, this was good. Now I understand. I appreciate. And I guess, maybe, I could be holy too. Oh, my God.